Okay, the purpose of this video is to explore um, on the graphing calculator, how do I find a confidence interval for the difference in two means? So again, um, I'm doing a survey on uh, parents of school-age children, asking them how much they would be willing to pay for private tutoring should I decide I want to get back involved with that. Um, I'm not gonna read you this entire problem this time, but just notice that I surveyed 72 parents of school-age children, they were asked how much they'd be willing to pay for tutoring, right? So some of the parents were parents of middle school children, and some were the parents of high school children. So we've got middle and high school. I'm gonna call them group one and group two. So group one, 38 parents were surveyed, um, and high school, 34 parents of high school children were surveyed, okay? The parents of middle school um, children said that they would be willing to pay a sample mean of $56 and standard deviation of 10. And the parents of high school children, they said that they'd be willing to pay a mean of $82 with a standard deviation of 12. I don't know if that, uh, you know, a little commentary, I don't know if that means that the parents of high school students are richer, they're making the kids help pay, materials harder, they expect to pay more. Um, honest with you, I just made up the numbers. So uh, in any case, um, you know, like in a previous video, we talk about the standard deviation here. Um, notice that the parents of middle school children are willing to pay a mean of $56 with a standard deviation of 10. High school children, mean of 82 with a standard deviation of 12. Notice that that standard deviation is not specified sigma, population standard deviation, or S, the standard deviation of the sample. However, in that sub sentence structure, the proximity of standard deviation to um, sample mean indicates uh, normally that that is a sample standard deviation and not a population standard deviation. So in the calculator, stat, tests, if you've been working on conference intervals, you've been through this procedure several times. Okay, and again, number seven or eight would be for a single mean, confidence interval for a single mean, depending on whether number seven, I know sigma, the population standard deviation, or number eight, I don't know sigma, the standard uh, deviation for the population. Similarly, in this case, we have two sample, right? Um, it's a, it's two groups, so it's either number nine or number zero, number 10. Um, is it a Z interval for two means or a T interval for two means? Since we don't know sigma, we're going to go with zero, number 10 there, um, for the um, difference of the two means. Okay, we've got the stats. So once again, um, X bar one is 56. Whoops, that was a two, 56. And sigma one is 10. Uh, N one is 38. So that's group one. Group two, the parents of high school children, right? X bar two is $82 an hour. Sigma X two is 12 and N two is 34, and it says here that we want to conduct a 95 or find a 95% confidence interval, okay? Another conversation we've had uh, in class, would we consider the data pooled or not pooled? First of all, the default, if you can't decide, you're not sure, is you would go with not pooled. Recall, uh, the purpose of this video is how do I use the calculator, but just real quickly recall pooled means can I reasonably conclude that the standard deviations for the two groups? In other words, I don't know the standard deviation for group one for the population. I don't know sigma one, and I don't know sigma two, the standard deviation for the uh, second group. But I, um, so the question is, but can I reasonably conclude that those two are equal or close to equal? If I can reasonably conclude that, and certainly they would be equal if I were to say the people the, in, in each of the two groups, in this case, the parents of school children in Wethersfield, if they came out of the same pool of people, and I would not expect much of a difference in the variation in what people would be able to pay for middle versus high school, then I would go ahead and use pooled. Okay, If I can't decide that for sure, I'm going to go ahead and not use Pooled. So in this case, let's start with not pooled because we're not sure. Not because we've determined, no, we can't conclude that that those may be equal. Um, it's that I 
not determining they're different, can't conclude reasonably that they're same. So by default, let's just leave it not pooled. We'll press enter. And so we've got that mu1 minus mu2 is somewhere between negative 31.23 and negative 20.77. In other words, what I would conclude from that is that the mean amount I would expect with 95% confidence that middle, the parents of middle school age children will pay for tutoring per hour compared to high school age children is somewhere between 31 and $21 an hour less. Or mu2 minus mu1, if I did the subtraction in the reverse order, I would be able to conclude with 95% confidence that the mean amount that um, high school parents, parents of high school children are willing to pay is somewhere between 21 and $31 more. Okay. Now, just for sake of comparison, what if we were to say, what if we did this with pooled data? So let's go stat, test, and repeat option zero, the two sample Z interval. And let's just for um, sake of investigation, click yes and calculate pooled. What would I conclude is the difference? And notice that if I'm talking money here, we're talking a difference of about six cents per hour. Okay. Um, some suggestion, a suggestion that I make sometimes is in a report, in a result, in a study, not necessarily for a test question, but for a project, for a result, for uh, reporting, you might include both. Um, you might make a statement that you went with not pooled because that's a more conservative effort, although using this pooled, you're only slightly different. Um, but in this case, I think the not pooled makes sense. And so I would use this confidence interval. So there again is a quick look at how do I um, find a confidence interval for the difference of two means using the graphing calculator.